Hi folks, Scott here. <clears throat> I got my mad scientist hairdo on. Uh, so real quick, I want to throw something out for people. Ed's PMH, the U-shaped iron core concept can be used for many things. Um, some quite practical, some not so practical. Number one, the one of controversy, perpetual motion holder, to me does not mean that that's holding the secret to perpetual motion in the way that Ed's wheel spun indefinitely on its own. But it could mean that that's how we'll get to it, thus all this pulse motor magnetismic perpetual motion searching. So on that note, the actual perpetual motion is what Ed was trying to describe, as we know, is the quote magnetons. I don't even want to go there. Electrons, quarks, whatever the energy is that causes that little uh, divergence of counter spatial activity. Um, and one good example that I know was used on old Digital Equipment Corporation. They were computers that had like a matrix set up with all these grids, wires, tiny wires, and there were little tiny little circles all through the wires, and they had it set up so that they could energize like A1 battleship game and get that ring energized, shoot a current through it, and the ring would go and become magnetized. And permanently hold it because we could shut the computers off at night. This was when I was when I was in high school, eee. dating myself. But that was in '75. You could just dump the computer, come in the next day, and it held itself in these little permanent iron rings, and that was actually memory. Okay. Besides that, the more practical applications now, since we've got static random access and even some more stuff they're working on, quantum. The stator, which is simply the U-shaped coils of plenty running some sort of a set of magnets around in a circle. Or whatever we... That's basically how... Uh, generator runs or a motor anyway it's a bunch of PMHs is the bottom line so you apply energy to it it causes a magnet affair the pickup same thing if these were magnets or these had coils energizing them these had coils then they become little pickups that's how an alternator works on your car then it's rectified but until then it's AC ring bell twice which we'll get into that too. Induction core coil, merely a small amount of windings on one side with lots and lots and lots on the other. You can send literally 12 volts in and get whatever, 400, 4,000 volts out with the changing magnetic field, which is the ring bell twice again. And a transformer, which that's also with a keeper, by the way. These last two. Whoop. That's something else. Just a second. I'll be right with you. So here basically is the same thing. The transformer, you got 12 volts, only it's AC going in. And you'd get whatever out of the turns ratio. So these are, these are interchangeable. This last one is from R.L. Poole and or Angus Wangus and or Mr. Too Tough Too. These guys, some of them, uh, R.L. Poole has a different uh, theory. The actual bucking coils are lens effect, reverse, counter EMF coils that can be used to offset the lens effect in a motor and therefore inductive reactants and such and try to get it to as close to unity as possible. Um, there's also a guy named McFarland Cook, I think. <laughs> Yee. Anyway, he dealt with oscillating 
bouncy ball-y, almost jewel thief type coils that had to do with approaching over unity due to the snapping of the ether which is the whole concept behind dynamic friction is less than static friction so therefore when you snap there's tablecloth the dishes don't go flying but there's an energy situation there that just approaches unity so there'll have to be some other outside force that sends a little extra in we all think that might be zero point I have my own theories zero point there's no way in living hell we're gonna get to that without nuking ourselves trust me so back to the simple things here the uh, ring bell twice just to throw that in here I wanted everyone to see oh this here also this double bucking coil if you slam any double current coil where it has a magnetic field that has to oppose itself instantly upon some sort of momentous agenda you'll have overtone harmonics of radiant events as Tesla stated that will propagate as a impulsive slice through the ether just once but it'll be at a rate with a wave front so sharp that it will emulate the same frequency as radar, microwaves, gamma, it all depends on the angle at which they slam and what kind of uh, you're gonna what kind of voltage you're gonna hit it with. So anyway, back to the ring bell twice. That's as simple as when you've got your little PMH here, when you bring the little core in there. If that's the magnet, I believe that's what Ed was saying in magnetic current, you have a winding or a magnet. When you bring it up, the fact that there's a changing magnetic field is what causes induction, not a magnetic field, a changing magnetic field. So it went from zero to all of a sudden there's a magnetic field there. So that is the first change in the magnetic field. So once it's there, the light goes out. That's what Ed noticed. Then, when he pulled it back, it went from 1 back down to 0. So it's changing again. So that's the second time from a 0 to 0 case that causes two events that Ed leads Skalman noticed. And that's what ring bell twice, I believe, is the fundamental purpose now there's a probably a myriad of other things because like some of the religious texts I don't ever say that's what it means and everyone else is wrong that's what it means and like all harmonics there's probably one chieftain cause which is the fundamental harmonic and that's what I believe Ed's ring bell twice really was and there's many other things because the seasons of the winter and the moon waning and Tide ebbing and flowing is a uh, ring bell twice, so on and so forth. Well, that's enough babbling, folks. There's a quick little thing going. I'm working on a uh, couple errors in my video, I believe. They have to do with, one, anybody who puts batteries in those boxes at the top might be warped in the head, but I don't know. Anyway... He did use batteries, just putting them up there, I don't know. I think maybe they held oil to keep the tops of the tripods from getting wet and rotting. Uh, honestly, some things we'll never know. I'm not claiming to have the whole mystery wrapped up a billion percent. Um, the last thing is something I've discovered, is that the clover wheel, the clover leaves on top are of a frequency that would really pump water, not cut stone. So... I am working on a water pump and I'm also working on a device that cuts very quickly with the relay piloting the device. Now whether Ed really turned the wheel electrically like Roy and I did, honestly, I really don't know. I have to admit that to everyone. So those people who are watching my video and you can tell the way I dress, I could care less. 
But I have the confidence to see that it was possible. I believe that German originality had it turning by itself. It does turn by itself. Roy's did. Mine does. I don't see why not. Who would want to sit there and turn it? But I believe that Ed's chief mission was to cut rocks and to live down there and build that castle. So the mission for him was not to try to get the wheel turning on its own. The mission for him was to get the rock tools in the field cutting on their own. So if all he had to do was take that bicycle in the picture and connect it up and just a pump away while that wheel was going like that, he was out there literally hardly doing anything with his legs, yet all those machines were cutting using battery power. And trust me, I know it's possible because the videos you guys have seen with the clunk clunk, that's all good, but that's not in resonance. The minute you get it in resonance, which I've been playing with, it starts to cut. And it doesn't use half, if not even a tenth, of the battery power. It just starts going... And it's all about the weights and the springs and the levers. Because I figured out that if you get a good enough weight on there with the right spring, it doesn't take anything to get it really going. And then the weight keeps it going. What I've got is deadlifting uh, Russell mechanism from hell. So... Enough rambling. That's my piece for now. Changes will be coming. Here's a little blurb on PMH. And there's a lot of research left to do. R.L. Poole's doing some on the astronomy. I am going to actually try to get some information from Germany or maybe through someone who speaks German to dig into the locality. Maybe go to some old quarry mining electrical museum and see if there's remnants of these devices anywhere left over. That's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching.